Hi everybody, I'm Beebs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Last week's fashion edition was all about Royal Ascot. If you missed it, I'll link it for you. And Catherine, Princess of Wales, was not there as she continues to focus on her health and as we continue to wish her well. But I thought we would start this week's fashion edition by looking back at her Royal Ascot appearances. And surprisingly, she actually hasn't been photographed there very often at all. A part of that might be because all three of her children are like spring or really early summer babies. So for several of the years, as far as when Royal Ascot took place, she was either very much pregnant and about to have her baby or had a newborn at home. So that could have been why she wasn't in attendance very often over the years. We actually only have five different outfits to look at from Catherine at Ascot. But that just makes me all the more excited to see what the future years hold for her fashions because these last two years were so stunning and spectacular. Last year she wore this gorgeous bright red Alexander McQueen dress and a Philip Tracy hat. This was amazing. This was so stunning. It's a gorgeous color on her. She looks magnificent. And I mean, of course it's a go-to silhouette for her. The sort of fit and flair always accentuates her figure nicely, but it was striking. It was so bold and beautiful. I loved it. The year before she wore this polka dot dress by Alessandra Rich. And this is that beautiful crepe de chine fabric with an asymmetrical hem that had brown accents, brown dots rather than black. So it was a really, really nice way to brighten up and warm up a traditional monochrome polka dot look. I loved it. I love her in dots. This is a great silhouette for her. She looked lovely. It was beautiful. And here she's wearing Princess Diana's pearl and diamond drop earrings with it and a fabulous, fabulous hat. In 2019, she wore a fan favorite, very Mary Poppins-esque, ethereal, beautiful dress here. This is a light blue Ellie Saab dress that has a lot more sheerness to it in the original design. So he adjusted this for her. So it's a bespoke piece, but there is a version of it available in this resort collection of his. And this is the dress that she has worn to at least one, if not two, garden parties. In 2016, it was her Royal Ascot debut, and she wore this white lace Dolce & Gabbana dress with sort of toffee nude pumps and a beautiful hat that had almost like a wicker accent to it. It was a really beautiful look. I love this lace on her. It's very beautiful. I love the skirt. It's got a slight tear to it. It reigns in nicely for her waistline. It was a great option. And the very next year, she wore something quite similar. This is an Alexander McQueen dress. It's a little bit shorter than the last one. It has a slightly more dramatic fit and flare silhouette. The sleeves are a little shorter. It's a slightly more summery version of what she wore the year before, basically. That was a little bit more spring in its vibe. This one feels just a little bit more summery. Overall, my absolute favorite is that red one from last year. But what is your favorite from her five Ascot appearances? This year on Garter Day, Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh, Bra looked so beautiful in her perfect spring dress. Now this looks really, really similar to the Zimmerman dress Princess Beatrice wore to Royal Ascot on day one, I think it was. But regardless, this is a very pretty dress on Sophie here. I love her hat, especially. I really like the jaunty hats on her with this cream bow and the pink. It's just really lovely. And it's a smart style for Sophie because she's a slightly busty, but also leans slightly pear-shaped. She doesn't have like broad shoulders or anything like that. That. So you can see that this dress is very fitted just under the bust down to where that waistband is, which really allows her figure room to show up. Whenever she wears something with more room underneath the bust before the waistband begins, or like around the upper waist area if there's too much space, or even if there's too much room in her sleeves right around that area, it can unfairly make her look a little bit frumpy or dowdy because it takes away from her waistline. Her waist can't show up like that when there's too much crowding or too much fabric fabric right around here or even through the sleeves. So this was perfect. So overall, the fit of this was really great. I would say the sleeves look like they might be a tad bit too long, but perhaps before we see her in this dress again, she could have a seamstress shorten them or even just give the dress some cuffs to rein in those sleeves. Either way, she looked lovely in this. Also for Japan's state visit, Queen Camilla looked magnificent and Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh, also looked fabulous. She wore the lotus flower tiara, which we 
we saw Catherine, Princess of Wales last year. It was a really sweet nod to her, but also it's one that worked really nicely for this event. It suits Sophie beautifully. It's not too huge or heavy or imposing, and it's perfect for a banquet like this because it's not too large. I mean, it's a tiara for goodness sakes, but it's more delicate and slightly smaller, probably more comfortable to wear. Like Queen Camilla wore the Burmese ruby tiara again, which she wore last year as well. And that one is just so big and beautiful. And of course, the biggest of tiaras and the most biggest of stones are always reserved for the actual queen or queen consort. But even still, it makes sense for Sophie or Catherine, Princess of Wales, for a state banquet to wear something a little bit more like this. It really suits the event well, and it looked beautiful. Another great opportunity for fun and beautiful fashions is always the garden parties. This year, Prince William invited his cousins to join him in hosting a garden party at Buckingham Palace, and despite the rain, everyone was so happy and just looked stunning. Let's take a closer look at their outfits. Everybody's favorite shot of Prince William in a top hat happened that day, and Princess Beatrice wore this fabulous hot pink, bright pink dress. I am obsessed with the buttons. The button accents are to die for. They are up the cuffs, a nice dramatic length, and down the front at an asymmetrical location with a bit of a ruffle to complement it. It's just perfect. It's beautiful. It's a stunning color, a great silhouette for her, fit her nicely, reining in at the waistline to allow her figure to shine. No complaints. Zara, though, was the most fashionable of the day, looking so stunning and fabulous. I would love to have this outfit. It's so beautiful. The pretty pink buttons down the front tie in the hat and the shoes perfectly. It's fit excellent. It's just perfect. It's, it's, there's nothing else to say except that this is spectacular. Very stylish, very lovely. And of course, Mike wore a slight pink hue in his tie to match his wife. Princess Eugenie's dress was slightly less successful here. It just looks a little bit dowdy, a little bit blah. The sleeves are creating a slightly droopy, sloping silhouette. And same with this sort of asymmetrical waistband that's happening here. It's also at a bit of a downward angle. And because she is a little bit curvier, this I just feel like didn't quite work. The sleeves have quite a bit of room to them, which is fine. But if the dress had been a little tighter across her waistband before the skirt or just a different construction to the to the dress itself it would have allowed those sleeves to not sort of dominate the look and creating that sort of droopy almost frumpy silhouette overall it's not the worst it has a sort of retro feel to it that i quite like i think that it's okay it just could have been more flattering to her if it were slightly different construction or, or dress, a slightly different dress style would have been more flattering to her figure. I'm also not 100% behind the sort of metallic shoe choice. It doesn't tie in with her hat and it doesn't tie in with the outfit. So I don't know, this one just was a slight miss, unfortunately. In years past at garden parties, we have seen some of Catherine the Princess of Wales's best fashion moments, like this mint green dress that is just so pretty. All these pretty details like the the cuffs and the puff sleeves, the slight ruffle to the trim, the beautiful flower, her hair down, the dangly earrings, the flowy and swishy fabric of the skirt. These details really tie in such a beautiful feminine style aesthetic that just looks beautiful on her. It's gorgeous. It's just plain pretty and it's perfect for spring. This was gorgeous. This bold pink, almost coral pink Amelia Wickstead dress paired up with a Jane Taylor hat was a perfectly tailored option and this bright bold beautiful color was well suited to spring but in 2013 when she also wore an Amelia Wickstead coat dress she paired it with a Jane Corbett hat and I quite like this one a little bit better because I just love the bright yellow it's so beautiful and fun and it still has that floral element to it that really ties it into spring she was pregnant here at this time I believe with Prince George and one of my favorite garden party looks from the late Queen Elizabeth was also yellow this bright beautiful a marigold yellow paired up with that high contrast blue accent that you can see her dress peeking out from beneath is in those colors and they match her hat perfectly and even her umbrella is 
has got that yellow tint to it. One of my personal favorites, really, really liked it. Another favorite is from 2019. Catherine's bespoke pink Alexander McQueen coat dress with a pleated skirt and matching hat are absolutely stunning. This pink is perfectly bright for springtime. It's fitted to her magnificently. I absolutely love this one. And the pockets and the panels across falling along her hips help to balance her figure really nicely. This is just one of the most beautiful, fresh, bright looks. And Queen Camilla has worn many a fabulous hat and coat dress to garden parties, but this one from 2022 when she was still Duchess of Cornwall was magnificent. I absolutely love the embroidery of these white flowers along the trim of the coat. It's just so beautiful and it's mirrored along the cuffs, flowing perfectly for her gloves and her hat, of course, matched perfectly too and is beautifully big. This was a great look for her. It's one of my favorites from Camilla from Garden Parties. But sometimes the royals have a bit of a miss. Like in 2018, Princess Eugenie wore a really dark navy, almost like midnight blue, which is a break from tradition. Usually Garden Parties, you wear something more spring, bright, light colors, something a little bit more fun. This was just a few months before her wedding, and this hat had the word love piped on it. So perhaps she found the hat and loved the love hat and wanted to wear it, so she had to pick something that would go with it. I would argue that a white dress with navy accents would have been a better choice than this, because this dress also was just kind of looked a little bit wrinkly here and there. It looked like the sleeves were a little bit frumpy. So I don't love those sort of bell cuffs on those sleeves for her, her particular figure. It kind of competed with her waistline there. So it wasn't my favorite look from Eugenie. Another one who kind of missed the mark was Meghan Markle for her first ever garden party. This was in 2018, immediately following the wedding it was for the Prince of Wales' 70th birthday. She wore this really pale, almost just plain beige dress from the fashion label Goat that featured organza sleeves and a high neckline, an oyster silk clutch bag, and she paired it with a Philip Tracy saucer hat. Now, I like the hat, okay? I think that that's a fine choice. It could have gone for like a flower or something to kind of add to it or maybe a ribbon or something somewhere would have been a nice addition, but I don't particularly love this dress. I feel like the sleeves themselves look a little ill-fitting and that raw edge adds a little bit of a messy vibe. On top of it, across the neckline, it also looks messy and the seams really stand out. I think that she really could have made a better impression in a fit and flare with a brighter color, perhaps something in a bridal pink, perhaps with some flowers or something like that, even with her more modern aesthetic that she likes to go for. She could have gone for something with a simple silhouette and clean lines, perhaps with a v-neck. She could have stuck with monochrome, but this just didn't really fit. Something more like this option that Catherine, Princess of Wales, previously wore when she was Duchess of Cambridge. This is an Amelia Wickstead dress in a beautiful, perfect pink hue and the hat I absolutely love the beautiful bows. This would have been a perfect option for Meghan Markle to have chosen except one that had a like v-neck would have been essential. This sort of a square neckline would not have worked well on Meghan but it would have worked nicely. This silhouette overall, this dress in general with a v-neck. It would have been a great choice. It would have been more springy, it would have been more appropriate, and it would have just I think made a better impression than the sort of mesh odd choice that she had made. Another fan favorite of Catherine at garden parties is this beautiful, soft, very, very pale yellow ensemble that she wore in May 2016. I absolutely love the ruffling, the peplum and this full skirt are great for her figure. They balance her out really nicely. And this is an Alexander McQueen dress that she previously wore to Prince George's christening. What are some of your favorite garden party looks from over the years? And what did you think of Meghan Markle's one and only garden party dress that she wore? Leave it in the comments. I cannot wait to hear your opinions there. Thank you so much for joining me for today's fashion edition. I hope you have a happy day ahead and I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.